Good call. And uh, first, Chip, you know, um, how do you think the president did? You cover this guy day in and day out. Um, was this one of his better speeches? And, and just give us your thoughts. Well, I certainly don't think it was on the level with the Tucson speech, but, you know, here he's talking about policy. It's harder to get that kind of uh, reaction from an audience when you're talking about policy. On the other hand, he didn't have that much in the way of details. But I'll tell you, Katie, Valerie Jarrett said that she got all those emails, positive emails, but I'm getting deluged with emails from Republicans and anti-tax groups and conservative groups and Republican political and campaign committees uh, really beating up on the president, especially saying that the heart of the speech, which was really that part on investments is the same old talk about stimulus spending and government spending. And I, I think there's no doubt that despite the fact that the president was talking about working together and you did get that kind of subdued, respectful response in the chamber, I think there's going to be a ferocious battle over spending in the weeks to come, the months to come, and probably for the next two years. Now, Katie, if you want any specific numbers or real information, this is your guy right here, Mark Noller. Yeah, so, in uh, fact, Noller. <laughs> Noller. I like to do that. Hey, Katie. On Ferris, Ferris Bueller. Hey, Mark Noller. Well, you've got a huge online following because you're always tweeting interesting factoids. So what do you have for us tonight, Mark? Well, uh, as you know, this was the second um, uh, State of the Union address that President Obama has given, even though it is his third, the start of his third year in office. But he has also given two other addresses to joint sessions of Congress. In his first year in office, 2009, President Obama delivered an address within about a month of taking office about the economy and about his plans for digging the nation and the economy out of a recession. And later in that same year, he also delivered an address to a joint session about health care reform that he eventually got enacted the following March. Now, in addition to these four uh, addresses to joint sessions, he has given three addresses to the nation. Uh, in his first year in office, he gave an address at the end of it in December 1st at West Point, announcing his plans to send another 30,000 U.S. troops to Afghanistan. He also gave a, uh, another address to the nation about the BP oil spill. And uh, later last year, he gave a third address to the nation when he announced that U.S. combat operations in Iraq were finally at an end. And Mark, you know, you're, you're the master of sort of minutia. No offense, I say that as a compliment to you. So uh, how many times was he interrupted by applause tonight? It seemed that was kind of limited, didn't it, in some ways, compared to other speeches? Well, it, it, it wasn't as long a laundry list. I don't have an exact number for you because I'm well, going to go do, back Mark, and 79, go through my, 79, go through, 79, Mark. 79, I hear 79, in my ear. Noller. Thanks, Katie. I appreciate it. Uh, but I'm going to have to check that number and make sure it's up to my standards. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, fine. Nevertheless, nevertheless, he did get a, a, a number of a very enthusiastic standing ovations. And certainly when he entered the House chamber, the, there was thunderous applause and cheers. And uh, it, it certainly was the kind of enthusiastic reception a president is looking for when he arrives for a uh, State of the Union address. What did you think, Mark, and then I'll let you and Chip get out of the cold, but what did you think of the whole seating arrangement? I mean, you covered the White House for a long time. Did you think it was a gimmick, as some Republicans seem to think, or, or do you think it was a good idea and, and, and sent the right message to the American people, or do you think they even noticed? Well, it certainly... Uh, members of Congress felt genuine about trying to demonstrate to themselves, each other, and to their constituents that uh, they were trying to start a new chapter in getting along, putting the vitriol aside. But is the fact that they, uh, that 60 or 70 members of Congress sat by a, a member of the other party, is it really going to change any of the policies or the bills or the uh, way in which uh, members of Congress deal with one another? That's highly unlikely. So to a certain extent, yeah, this was a political stunt. All right. Mark Noller, thank you. Cameraman, you can pull out so we can see Chip Reed and thank him unless Chip has already gone home. Oh. Chip Reed, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Same Go to bed. Team, I know it's been a long day. <laughs> thank you for sticking around. And, Mark, it was fun having you on our webcast. I'll talk to you both soon. Thanks, Katie.